What's up guys? I got a pretty cool application for you today. I've got Tyson's 17.4 part here. We're gonna put a grind on this shaft and I'm doing the setup. I'm gonna hold this part between centers. Now, when I'm doing that, there's nothing that's gonna be able to drive this part. And I'm doing cylindrical grinding, the wheel's gonna be turning, but your part also turns. So in order to make it turn, we gotta use a drive dog that attaches the part to the workhead and it's gonna drive that part. And it's important that it doesn't slip. So we're gonna use a drive dog to do this. Now, you can see how small this one is. I could use it on this side. However, I don't wanna clamp this on the threads and ruin my threads. I'm gonna step it up to the bigger drive dog and that still doesn't have the white diameter. That's not gonna fit. So what's common practice in the industry is to use a pipe clamp. Now, I have kind of a weird history with pipe clamps. Hose, a hose clamp, and the system didn't properly get turned on, right? We allowed the pressure to build up and the hose popped off and water spilled on the floor. I'm not a huge fan. I've seen these fail. You know, putting this on the end of the part, which will work, and it does work, but I got metal contact all the way around the circumference of the part. I think there could be a better option than using a pipe clamp. I'm gonna head over to the additive department and talk to Trevor. He'll be able to use his solid work skills to reverse engineer this to the diameter that would accept this part. We're gonna make a nice 3D printed drive dog and drive it on this machine. And I think that's gonna be a lot better than using that old nasty pipe clamp. So Scott came to me with this problem and he needs a bigger drive dog printed. So I'm gonna go ahead and design one up and we're gonna print it on our Mark II. So if you notice all the blue running throughout this part, those are continuous carbon fiber strands and we've got about six layers of them throughout our part. So here's the design of our drive dog. Basically, we just increase this diameter here so that our part will fit inside of it. And then I also added another screw instead of having just one in the center. And these screws are directly in line with the center of this radius on this pad. We also are going to add some heat set inserts inside of these holes to reinforce our threads and then we'll route some carbon fiber through our part and that'll be it. So, you know, Scott came to us with this problem and we designed this clamp up really fast. And we sent it over to the Mark II using Iger and we hit print and a few hours later, it came out looking like this. It looks beautiful, it's super strong. Everything looks great. So we're gonna send it back over to him and he's gonna test it out and see how it works. He said something about carbon fiber in here. It's pretty cool and I'm, man, this thing is rigid. So I think it's gonna be perfect to drive my part. Cool. So I just got done installing Trevor's drive dog that just came off the printer and I can say it worked absolutely perfect. I got really good rigidity, things not moving. I'm utilizing the driver the way it's intended because I got this tang in here. Unlike that pipe clamp that was kind of just butting up to the driver. Now I can go back and forth. I can go clockwise or counterclockwise and not have any issues. What an awesome application for a 3D printer. I love seeing that come together and within a couple of hours have a solution to a problem and really didn't cost that much. So really cool to see some added manufacturing. Check out Trevor's stuff. He's got a lot of cool videos on 3D printing and metal 3D printing. He's also got the new wire EDM. Hit the notification bell, like, and subscribe. We got a lot more content coming out for you guys. We'll see you soon, all right?